It's me again. It's Kicker, your host, and you're back for another episode of Kicking It With Kicker. Let's go see what time it is. Starting to make a habit of this. It's 1, 2, 3 a.m. on a Friday. 1, 2, 3 a.m. Friday morning. All right, well, I guess um, I got some stuff set up for you here, and uh, I had some lame intro, like Professor Kicker's got this on the prescription (laughs) for the mad scientist. So it starts like this, and here's my spiel, and I'm just going to go for it and all right let's get right into it you got to have good spark so everything starts with good spark and what I got laying here is a set of AC Delco R45 TS's and they're a pretty hot spark plug so in order to run hot spark plug you need a lot of fuel and in order to deliver a lot of fuel you got to have a single plane intake manifold and that's what this is and it's a y-end accelerator series 2 with the recess in the flange for the notch for a plate that you can put in here that you could have bought separately when you purchased this and the plate was designed with holes in it to act as a divider plate so that you could get the benefit of having dual plane responsiveness from a single plane intake and so you couldn't quite match the numbers of a actual YN dual plane intake compared to the accelerator that had the divider plate in it but this intake was originally and specifically designed to run between 1800 and 7000 rpm range where dual plane will peak out at 55 5600 and this one will keep building rpm keep building it power all the way up to 7000 and you can just keep dumping the fuel to it and in order to keep dumping the fuel to it you got to have one of these this one right here is a Comp Extreme Energy 294. For you guys that didn't get to see, on the other video, I'm trying to get that to focus in for you, but I think that the light is playing tricks on it. It's a 519-523 lift, hydraulic flat tap it. got a 106 intake center line on it with a load separation angle of 110 degrees and that duration is 294 306 so it's a split lift and a split duration cam and it's got a pretty hack hack hackety hack hack and uh these are the brand new comp liquors that go with it. <clears throat> and like you saw in the other video the other night, you have to have a nice smooth surface on that can for that lifter to seat against once it goes down into that lifter bore and rest on here 
and now that they're all smoothed up with that emery cloth this can is ready to break in for the very first time but those are like really smooth compared to what that emery cloth did but uh yeah i don't have a factory emery cloth with 2000 2500 5000 emery cloth whatever they're using yeah, I just wanted to use a rough emery cloth to knock that down, and that's exactly what I did on every single one of them, including the cam eccentric on the very end right there. I didn't want that cam rod to um, have to knock all of that black stuff off of that cam and put all of that contamination into the, my oil right off the get-go and um, so yeah with that being said you want to make sure that this stuff is lubricated and always get like if you're running a comp cams cam and lifters get a comp cams cam and lifter installation lube for it and because it's specifically rated to stick to this thing long enough for it to break in during that initial fire up. What I didn't do the last time I put it together was because I didn't think that I had all the pieces to put this in with. And I was right, I didn't, and it was the wrong button. But this is a timing gear and chain cam button that goes on the end of the cam when it's installed and it just rides there and so this is the one that I needed and I ordered it and um, so got a new cam button to go in it when it all goes back together this time moving on the main reason it's been sitting out there is because it needed a new seal and gasket so I got a new seal and a new gasket and I think the main reason that the seal failed and that the gasket failed was because I had one bad bolt in there on the front pump. So I bought some Hela coils and I got some big ones and some smaller ones and some red Loctite. Got a new pan gasket and filter. And this little feller right here, it's a 10 inch assault racing 2200 to 2600 RPM stall converter and uh, it ought to do all right in there behind that big old nasty gnarly camshaft but you can't do all of that torque converter work to match the camshaft to match the intake to match the heads to match the transmission only to have it spin in one tire so to remedy that one tire fire we got a mini spool right here for an 8.5 Chevy 10 bolt with a 28 spline, which is what I have in my truck, and that's called a mini spool. And I'm going to mini spool that rear end up and throw a new oil change on the old guy after all this is done to it. And that's kind of what I've been up to today. And uh, now that I've got all that whole spiel out of the way, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I did a little something to the bench and cleaned up a little bit down there. I mean, it isn't great. There's still stuff buried back there, but <laughs> I'll get to that eventually made it look better up front anyway and uh, I stuck the broom back in there and got all the cobwebs out anyway cleaned up all of that underneath there the best I could and cleaned up my area yep I cleaned up all of this over here I call this oil alley and I call this 
antifreeze alley. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Over here, it's just a mess. I'm not even going to turn the light on. Yep. You guys have seen all of that before. You don't need to see any of that. And um, <clears throat> I've been down here since about 1030. Wow. I got out of my shower early and I thought, well, I'll record a little bit, make a short video for you guys to let you know that everything is here to do the upgrade on Noisy Boy except for the carburetor that I ordered. It's a Holley 750 vacuum secondary, but it has no choke tower on it. And it still has the old style press in air bleeds, but it does have four corner. It does have four corner um, air bleeds on it, on, on the fronts with, um, annular down legs so it boost those booster legs <clears throat> and uh it ought to do all right hope it it'll do okay if not i got that edelbrock right back there i got it tuned up kind of sitting there hiding underneath his ugly little stewie griffin hat looks like stewie griffin sitting there stewie griffin <laughs> I'm not even going to attempt to do Stewie Griffin because sometimes I can sound just like that Seth MacFarlane guy. And it's kind of weird, actually. And uh, I don't like imitating that guy or mocking that guy or any of the voices that he can do. Because then everybody's like, do Stewie Griffin, do Stewie Griffin. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do Stewie Griffin. <laughs> I used to do Fire Marshal Bill when I was younger, and man, everybody used to say, do Fire Marshal Bill. And my big old buck teeth back then, and I could dry my lip off and tuck my lip way up there high onto the gum. I didn't have any facial hair. And then I could turn my hat around backwards and pull it down tight on my head like that, <laughs> and instantly transform into Fire Marshal Bill just have everybody rolling. I actually used to have a pretty cool sense of humor until, I don't know, growing up changed that sense of humor into, I don't know, it went away for a long time and this thing that came back is so far from a sense of humor I don't even know what it is. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad you guys got to ride along for a minute. I wanted to show you something that I got given to me as a gift the other day and it reminded me of that old saying that a closed mouth does not get fed so I asked and I received and this is what I received check this out I asked hey what's up with those hats back there on that shelf I was like are those free or do you gotta buy those he's like nah they're promotional hats you want one it's like what kind you got back here he's like well here just have one of each so he gave me a Napa know-how Napa know-how Napa racing number nine Chase Elliott Napa know-how Napa know-how and this one is Napa USA we believe in heroes Napa we believe the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund. That was a pretty nice hat to receive as a gift, I thought. I'm not much of a hat guy anymore. I'm more of a bandana guy. I'm going to wear my old bandana from Missouri. Kind of different like that. Them hats and then ball caps like that are for baseball players and farmers. And I'm not a baseball player or a farmer and uh, I probably won't ever have any kind of field of dreams to worry about wearing a baseball to play baseball in my corn 
Oh, never mind. That's a Costner movie. What was we talking about again? I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Baseball hats. Hey, those are um, Mother Nature's engineers. Or just simply Nature's engineers. A bird engineered that thing. And an insect called a dirt dauber or a mud dauber engineered those things pretty cool I thought blue reflectors that got busted the kids down the street thought that my blue reflectors looked so cool that they just yank them right off of the white post they'd been on for the last two and a half years mowed around them successfully for two and a half years and neighbors down the street let their kids get off on the bus on the corner up here okay I don't know why they were getting on and off the bus <clears throat> on the corner up here when normally it's the house like way down the street is where they all got to congregate at to get on the bus because it's a safer safer pick up and drop off location like right down the street on the right hand side so anyway that was kind of weird so he gets off the bus that day jumps out mad and just yanks the probably just in the video right here be right back